Uh, and so uh, that will uh, be the third topic of the course. These topics have something in common. All of them involve observing something that you can't actually see directly. We don't see these planets directly uh, because they're too faint and too far away. Uh, we don't see black holes directly. By the definition of black hole, you can't see these things uh, directly. And of course, dark energy, uh, by its very name, is also undetectable. So how do we know that these things are there? And the answer is we know that they're there because of their influence on other objects that we can see, and in particular their gravitational influence on other objects that we can see. And so what binds these three topics together are, first of all, uh, the fact that the observational techniques to discover them are actually, actually quite similar to each other, uh, and second, um, that uh, they all involve different manifestations of gravity. And so uh, we'll be talking in the first part of the course about uh, Newtonian gravity. Uh, in the second part of the course, when we get to black holes, that's relativistic gravity, general relativity, Newton's, uh, Einstein's theory, which supplanted Newton's theory. Uh, and then by the time we get to dark energy, uh, it may not even be correctly described by Einstein's work. And we may be in the uh, area of whole new kinds of physics that the theorists haven't even thought about yet. Uh, and so there will be a progression to more and more sophisticated theories of gravity underlying these observations. Um, OK, uh, there's another uh, feature that these uh, topics have in common, uh, and that is that they can be understood in some detail uh, without, uh, without particularly sophisticated mathematics. Now, let me pause here and say some things about math. Uh, astronomy is a mathematical topic. There will be math in this course. There ought to be math in any astronomy course, or it isn't really an astronomy course. It's just a slideshow. Um, now, the math in this course has been kept at a deliberately low level. That is to say, the kind of math we'll be doing is stuff you did in ninth and 10th grade. Uh, introductory high school algebra, high school geometry. I think we take the sine of an angle a couple of times, but, it almost, but, in, but in the one case, it cancels out almost immediately. So uh, don't let that scare you. Uh, and it's the kind of thing that you all did on the math SATs. And since you're all sitting in this room, you must have done OK, right? Um, Having said that, uh, I have discovered that saying that is misleading. And the reason it's misleading is cast your mind back to ninth grade. Ninth grade math is hard. OK, remember? Uh, in particular, word problems are hard. And uh, you remember word problems. This is where you drive from here to Cleveland, and you fill your tank up with gas, and the gas costs so much per gallon. And the question is, what is your shoe size or something? Uh, and uh, you all, but, but the way one approaches that is through a kind of common sense approach, which involves the fact that many of us have been in a car driving from city A to city B, perhaps not Cleveland, but somewhere else. And so you have a kind of intuition to fall back on. When you do math problems that are logically the same, but applied to astrophysical systems, for which you have absolutely no common sense uh, to back you up, uh, then you have to reason purely from the internal logic of the problem. And that's hard to do. It's a skill that can be learned. It's a skill that's worth learning. It's a skill that I'm sure many of you already have to a large extent. Uh, but it isn't an easy thing. And so the fact that the level of the math is low doesn't mean that the problems are easy. Uh, and. Uh, uh, we do have a lot of help mechanisms, which I'll describe perhaps on Thursday, uh, to, keep you, uh, uh, to keep you up to speed if you start having trouble with these things. Um, OK, so I should say something about course requirements here. Let's see. Uh, we have sections in this class. These sections are not just problem-solving sections. These are actually required. Uh, the fact that we're dealing in topics uh, for which the answer isn't fully known means that one can actually have discussion sections, unlike many science courses. So we're going to do that. Uh, and so the structure of the course is like a history course, two lectures a week plus required section. And so 10% of your grade comes from sections. A large fraction of that is just showing up. Uh, but there'll also be something in terms of you know, uh, saying something intelligent once you get there. Um, 
That's 10% of the course. 30% of the course is problem sets. We will hand these things out once a week. Uh, the first problem set will show up on Thursday. And if you have any question about whether uh, this course is appropriate for you, the right thing to do is to look at that problem set and uh, ask yourself, is this reasonable? I will say uh, it, that uh, students on their evaluations have pointed out that it does. the course does get harder. Uh, it's not that the math gets more complicated, but the situations get more complicated. And so uh, if you have serious serious trouble with the first problem set, that's probably a warning sign. As I say, that will be handed out on Thursday. Uh, these things come about once a week. It's 30% of the grade. I'll say more about problem sets later uh, on Thursday. 30% comes from two midterm exams. The way we do this is the one where you get the better score counts 20%. The one that you get the worst score counts 10%. So that gives you a little bit of a break. Uh, and then there'll be a final exam. That's the last 30% of the class. There's also an optional paper. If you choose to do that, that will count 15% of your grade. And what it will do is it will de-weight whichever the worst of your 30% parts of your grade are back down to 15%. So uh, if you're uh, a word person rather than a number person, uh, you get this opportunity to, uh, to augment your score and de-weight uh, some other uh, part of the class in which you may have done less well. Uh, yeah, all of this stuff is on the classes server. I should say that the uh, uh, syllabus that I put out here is uh, just a direct copy off of what's on the classes server. So uh, feel free to, uh, uh, to take that. But all the information, and actually more information, uh, is, uh, is online. OK. Let me uh, pause now and ask whether there are questions about the course and the course procedures. Yes? Uh, no, no. This class is going to meet now. Uh, I'll have to check and see what you were thinking of. But it may be that what that was referring to was section times. And actually, this is something that I haven't mentioned. Sections are required. They're all going to be on Mondays. We're going to have a wide range of times, all of them on Mondays from 1230 till I think 8 at night. Uh, but you do have to sign up for a section. Let me also say, uh, I've, I've mentioned here, uh, I don't think this is actually looking at the number of people here. I think we're going to be able to accommodate everyone, including, including juniors and seniors. Uh, but I did set it up in such a way that freshmen and sophomores get first crack. Uh, the way that's going to work is set the section, the online sectioning form opens up on Mondays. On Monday, uh, and juniors and seniors won't be allowed to officially register for the class until Tuesday. So the freshmen and sophomores get to fill up the sections first. Uh, my guess is, again, looking at the number of people here today, that we won't have any problem, and that if you're a junior or a senior, uh, you'll you'll get in just fine. Um, and uh, yeah, and so we'll be picking sections through the through what is now the standard online sectioning thing, which is going to open for business next Monday. Uh, I'll check the website and see if, if, if that's actually what you meant, but it may, it may have been something else. Other questions? Oh, OK. Other questions? Let me, in general, encourage you to ask questions. I know that that's hard to do in a big lecture setting, uh, but we have an advantage over, over other courses, particularly science courses. We're not trying to prepare you for the astronomy part of the MCATs, OK? So we don't have to cover a specific syllabus. We're not even trying to follow a textbook. Uh, and so we have a little more leeway than, than is ordinarily true uh, to ask questions and go in weird directions. So please feel free to do that. Uh, I reserve the right to, to put a question off into, into the future or, or, or into discussion section or something. But do by all means ask. We have, we have some freedom of action. Yes? Um, is this class going to choose an early final? An early final. Let me think about that. Uh, I prefer to avoid it because then I have to invent another final. The problem with that is trying to make them come out even. Uh, I will say this, uh, that if I do an early final, I'm probably going to err on the side of making it hard. Uh, but it's very hard to make them come out even. But, but, but l let me think about that. <laughs>